We will go forward into the general election reaffirming the same three pledges that we made at the beginning of this campaign. Number one, we said that we wouldn't fight just Obamacare, the failed health policy, but we would fight Obamacare, the failed worldview. Perhaps no headline captured the current state of the Tea Party than the one from the Washington Post on May 14th of this year. Simple and to the point, it read, the Tea Party is dead, long live the Tea Party. Add to that, if we want to scroll down to the last line in the story, the sentence reads that the Tea Party will be, quote, an ongoing headache for the GOP. Take two aspirin and call me in a mere few seconds as we welcome into uh, midpoint on this issue conservative activist and blogger for WayneDupree.com and RightWingNews.com, Alyssa Lafage, and the founder of Tea Party Nation, one of the largest Tea Party groups in the country, Judson Phillips. Thank you so much for joining us, both of you. Thank Thanks you. for having me. Judson, i got to start with you on this one because I'll tell you what, when I talk about taking a couple of aspirin and call me in the morning this time for the Tea Party, this has got to be something that the people in the Tea Party are a little bit concerned about. This goes to the Tea Party chairman for the state of Mississippi, Roy Nicholson, who makes a comment and asks God for help. We ask for your blessing upon the conservatives in this state that they might stand firm and strong. Father, we even ask for you to bless our enemies, and Lord, they are truly our enemies that head the Republican Party and the whole political establishment. Let me just finish his prayer. We're asking, Father, for two things. We're asking, Father, that you would expose them, set division against them, set them one against, uh, set them one against another, bring confusion and fear into their camp, into their thinking, for the purpose of pulling them down, for casting them down out of their high offices, and reducing them, Lord, to having no power in the state. Come on, now, isn't this going a little bit too far overboard? Well, <clears throat> you have to think about this for a second and put it in context for a moment. The fight in Mississippi has been extraordinarily nasty. I mean, even by the standards of nasty political fights, this one has been nasty. Uh, you know, this guy said something, perhaps in the heat of, a mo of the moment. Maybe he feels differently about it now. I don't know. I haven't talked to him. I don't really know the guy. But look at what was done. The most vicious campaign against the Tea Party with Republicans led by Haley Barber and the Cochran campaign acting like Democrats and to the point that it even drove one guy in the Mississippi Tea Party, Mark Mayfield, to suicide. So I understand their bitterness. I understand their frustration. They have come, and you know, if it weren't for the Tea Party, John Boehner would simply be an obscure congressman from Ohio, not the Speaker of the House. So you know, there's a lot of frustration from Tea Party folks. You know, sometimes in the heat of a moment, you say something wrong. But you know what? If you look at what happened, maybe it's understandable why somebody has that flash of anger why they say something that may be in the cool reflection of afterthought they wouldn't necessarily say. I understand that, but still, to ask God to be violent against establish, re establishment Republicans, that does have to make the rest of the Tea Party pause for a moment and say, this is not what we're trying to push forward here. This only hurts our national brand. This is just the wrong thing to say. There needs to be apologies all around here. You don't ask God to smite your opponents, do you? No, uh, you know, Speaking for God is well above my pay grade. I don't try to do it, uh, and I'm, I'm not going to here. Uh, you know, one of the reasons I like blogging a little bit more than live speaking is I can edit myself and correct and, and cut out things that you know might be embarrassing like that. But the real issue is not that this guy, this one guy, went off and said something. The real issue is the attitude that many in the Republican Party, the so-called establishment in the Republican Party, have towards the conservative wing of the party and the Tea Party. That is, they want us to come in every two or four years, do the heavy lifting, hold up the signs, pound the pavement, do the dirty work, and then when it's all done, they want us to sit down, shut up, and go away for two years while they go up to Washington and act like drunken Democrats. And that's the real issue, and that's the real problem. Alyssa, is that part of what's going on here? Sit down, shut up, and just act like Democrats? Look, I really think that that's, that's not what's happening. Um, I think that's a little bit heavy-handed to say. I think that conservatives, and specifically Tea Party conservatives, people that would identify with the Tea Party, have been a little bit misunderstood, and maybe they've they've put the image out themselves. I consider myself a conservative. I consider myself a Tea Party conservative. However, you know, to say that we're only you know involved during elections and that they want us to just kind of be trumpeted out at that time, I don't think that's true. I think a lot of us, and I can speak for myself because in the past I wasn't necessarily involved in the elections and trying to actually get out there outside of just holding a sign and making a statement. 
Um, some people really need to try and do more than just that. And I think for some time now, that's all the Tea Party has been doing. Um, and, you know, obviously we've had more involvement, you know, in this particular election that he was talking about. But I'm not going to get into a position where I'm trying to defend or make excuses for someone who says such things. This type of rhetoric is, is quite divisive. And we have to remember who our real enemy is. Our enemy here is not the Republican Party. Sure, we're going to have things that we disagree with them on as conservatives, as, as you know, someone who might align themselves with the Tea Party, but that's not um, that's not the enemy. The enemy here, if we want to talk enemies, is the Democrats. They're, it's the Democrats, and we need to remember that and stay focused and stop fighting with each other within our party. Can the Tea Party survive in what is, and Alyssa, you first, with what is basically or what seems to be to people an us versus them attitude against Republicans? I don't think that it's a matter of survival. I think it's a matter of how we move forward and if we're going to be effective or not. You know, there will always be, you know, the super, super conservative. There will always be moderates. There will always be, quote, unquote, establishment types. It's just a matter of can we work together. And I think the answer to that is yes. I think we need to find more issues and more ways to work together. And God forbid I say it, compromise on some things. But we need to remember what side we're on. All right, Justin, to you. Compromise, that's a word I know that a lot of Tea Partyists just despise. You know, compromise, I have no problem with compromise. The problem I have with Republicans that compromise is compromise is their goal. And when compromise is your goal, surrender is always your first option. I have no problem with compromise as long as it advances our goal. I have no problem working with Republicans who I don't necessarily see eye to eye with. I've endorsed a number of them this cycle. But you know what? When we have Republicans who act like Democrats, and specifically I want to talk about the Mississippi race, where Haley Barber goes out and does something that I would expect out of Al Sharpton, uh, when you get that kind of campaigning, that's a line that, that, that is crossed that simply cannot be forgiven. So, you know, yeah, we do need to work together, but it's a two-way street. And when you get people like the Cochran campaign, the Barber machine, when they go as extreme as they did, that's an unforgivable sin in my book. Alyssa, 10 seconds left. Just keep the rhetoric down. I just think we need to not give the left any more ammo. We, we need not say things like this gentleman said, um, you know, and, and really just try and keep our message on, on point. I think that is probably the best way to put it because I think this issue certainly gave the left a whole lot of ammo against the Tea Party. I thank you both for being here, Alyssa and Justin. We will absolutely do this again. we got a lot more to talk about before we get to the midterms. Thanks again. Thanks for having me. All right, next hour here on Midpoint, the former Deputary Undersecretary of Defense digs into the American game plan on ISIS and whether anything of substance is being accomplished. And after the break, the National Guard in Ferguson, Missouri. Are they making any difference in stopping the violence? It's coming up next on Midpoint.